So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Did you have some coffee this morning? I know it's very cold, but it's, uh, I believe when we're in the room, uh, let's try as much as possible to connect and, and be proactive. Uh, as uh, Emmanuel mentioned, my name is Philip. I come from Rwanda, even though I have two English names, but I'm fully Rwandan. And perhaps I'm in the right place. Um, so, uh, Ambassador, I think, has literally made our job very simple. He has made the pitch, uh, but it's also very important for us really to give you uh, an insight of the opportunities uh, available in Rwanda um, uh, broadly. Before I start my presentation, I need to know how many, peop how many people have been to Rwanda in this room? Oh, wow, such a big number. Uh, how many of you already are running businesses in Rwanda? Nice, this is really good. And how many of you are looking to expand to Rwanda? And how many of you have registered their businesses online without coming to Kigali? Okay, only two. So thank you very much. I think so. it's, it's very important for, for me to have um, this uh, pr perspective. But for those who have not been to Rwanda before, uh, we have prepared a very, I would say, um, a very good pitch for us to be able to tell you why you should come to do business in Rwanda. So the first slide is really to uh, present to you uh, our country at a glance. Uh, Rwanda uh, is you know, a very small country, uh, strategically located at the center of Africa. Um, we're a landlocked country, but we're a land-linked uh, nation, So, which means that it's so easy for you to get to Rwanda. Uh, today we fly uh, to London. Uh, we have a direct flight from Kigali uh, to Brussels, London. And the other thing is that we also have a universal visa regime, which means that if you travel to Rwanda, you don't need to apply for a visa. You can actually get your visa online. And secondly is that um, when you're from uh, you know, a country that is a, a member of the Commonwealth, you actually get your visa free of charge on arrival the first 30 days. So literally, there's no excuse for you not to come to Rwanda. Uh, in terms of population size, our country today, population is estimated at 13 million. We just recently concluded uh, the national population and housing census. But in terms of estimates, uh, we're at around 13 million, which is more or less the domestic market. But in addition to that, it's also very important to highlight that Rwanda is a member of the East African community. This is a regional bloc that brings together seven countries with an estimated population size of 300 plus million uh, mil uh, inhabitants. So when you come to do business in Rwanda, so it's so easy for you uh, to do business uh, with the rest uh, of the East African region. Secondly, we're also members of the COMESA, which is the common market for Eastern Southern Africa. So literally, if you come to do business in Rwanda, you're able to do business with over 15 countries, you know, within the COMESA region with an estimated population size of 500 uh, million people. The other important aspect is really around, um, you know, we've seen Rwanda's economy grow. I think Ambassador did highlight how Rwanda's economy has literally been growing. Over the last 10 years, our economy has been growing on an average growth rate of 8%. The size of our economy has actually grown nine times and the GDP has tripled. Today, as we speak, our GDP is um, at 800 and almost 60, and our target is really to grow our GDP per capita by 4,000 by 2035, because Rwanda's aspiration is to be, you know, a high, uh, an upper middle income country, and then a high income country uh, by 2050. Uh, in the first quarter, just a uh, few weeks back, uh, we also had a very great an announcement where we saw that our GDP almost grew at 7%. And on average, uh, this year, we're looking at growing almost at 6.9%. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, as a country that has come, you know, from a very devastating history, our leadership really made very bold and championed reforms across all sectors of our economy, be it in business. Ambassador did mention how it's easy for you to do business in Rwanda today. Setting up your company takes less than six hours. It's online and free of charge. We've seen significant reforms when it comes to governance, insecurity, even the macroeconomic policies that have really made our economy very strong and resilient. 
as I mentioned earlier, uh, over the last 10 years, our economy has grown, you know, an average growth rate of 8%. This, you know, the size of the economy has grown nine times. But in addition to that, we've also seen our GDP grow um, has actually tripled. The other fundamental elements, ladies and gentlemen, really around creating an enabling environment, you know, um, making it easy for people to set up their businesses. We have automated at least almost all our services where people can easily get their services online without having physical interactions through our, our office. In addition to that, um, Rwanda is a very safe country to live and work. Today, Rwanda is the safest country in Africa and sixth in the world, according to, um, in, in the review that was conducted by Youth Bounce, a renowned and travel, uh, uh, travel website. So we believe that security is very important, not just for Rwandans, but even for people who are coming to do uh, business uh, in the country. And my new Rwanda was the only one, uh, country in Africa that made it uh, in, the top list, uh, in the top 10 list, which is currently led by Switzerland. Then the other important aspects is really positioning Rwanda as a hub uh, for business. Two important elements. One is really want to position Rwanda as you know, a logistics hub with the, you know, uh, the current investment that government is undertaking in the construction of the new Vigesora International Airport. We believe that our country is capable really to attract, but also uh, you know, promote investments and tourism using that new airport as an entry point. But the other important aspect is also on the Kigali International Financial Center. My colleague will be speaking more to uh, that. Uh, we're also trying to see how do we attract a pool of new capital, but also allowing companies to domicile their Pan-African entities in Rwanda and then be able to expand uh, the rest of their services across the region, but even the continent uh, as a whole. Then the other is really, you know, Rwanda is a very gender sensitive country. We believe that women have a very significant role to play in the socioeconomic development uh, of the country. Today, as we speak, 61.3% of our parliamentarians are women, and almost 50% um, you know, of the cabinet members are women. Now, for Rwanda really to be, very comp to be competitive, but also to attract more investments, we have enacted so many policies and laws, and one of the laws that we have is the investment code, and this investment law clearly articulates some of the key incentives that we believe can help us to attract more value-added FDI uh, into Rwanda. And today, uh, you know, with the Kigali International Financial Center, you know, we really want to grow manufacturing industry. We want to, you know, attract uh, talent uh, into the country. There are several uh, incentives that we've put in place for us really to achieve that vision. One of them is the 0% corporate income tax if you want to relocate or bring your regional office or headquarters uh, to Rwanda. So if you're a company that is looking to expand uh, you know, the headquarters to, to Africa, we believe that Rwanda will be the right place for you to really do that. Then secondly is that we also have a 3% reduced corporate income tax. Uh, my colleague will be speaking more to some of the key entities that we are literally trying to attract to Rwanda within the scope of you know, positioning Rwanda as a financial services hub. Uh, we, you know, if you're looking to set up your private equity fund, your venture capital, uh, you know, holding company, um, you know, you want to set up your fintech uh, fund, whether, you know, remittances, all that, the, you know, you get a 3% reduced corporate income tax, which is very significant. Today, corporate income tax is 30%, so bringing it down to 3% is quite um, a huge investment that you should be definitely take advantage of. Then uh, the other incentives that we have in place, we have a 15% reduced corporate income tax if you at least export 50% uh, uh, of your turnover goods. And then Rwanda being a member of the East African community, uh, we have uh, uh, you know what we call a common external tariff that applies to goods coming into, into Rwanda. So as a regional bloc, we all have uh, one a common external tariff that applies to goods and services coming into the region. And as such, if you're importing raw materials and machinery, you pay 0%. Uh, uh, finished goods is now 35% from 25%, and then semi-finished goods is 10%. Um, is 
In the interest of time, I really try to be very fast. I think I did allude to the market size that when you come to do business in Rwanda, it's very, very important for you to take advantage of the regional market. But even beyond that, we also have the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, you know, with an estimated size of 1.2 billion. We see that Africa is actually uh, a new emerging market that so many investors should be able to come and take advantage of. And Rwanda definitely will be the right, you know, place for you to, you know, start your business, for you to be able to, you know, scale up and be able to export your services uh, to the rest uh, of the continent. But the other very important market is the proximity market. You know, um, Rwanda being at the center of so many countries within the region, there's some markets that are more close, you know, based on geographical location. Um, you know, if you see the eastern part of the DRC, uh, the proximity market is almost 20 million. And that population is more or less dependent uh, to Rwanda. So we believe that when you come to set up um, in Rwanda, so you have an opportunity to actually do business uh, with this part of the region. And we've also seen that Rwanda is an entry point for most of the re-exports that go to this part uh, of the world. So if you really want to set up business in Rwanda, we believe that definitely this is an opportunity that your company will be able to take advantage of. Then in terms of connectivity, I think this is also another very fundamental part of you know, doing business, and, but also tourism. So today, if you want to you know, get to Rwanda, uh, we have a national airline, Rwanda that flies to over you know, 24 destinations. And definitely, London is one of the key uh, destinations that we fly to. So there's no excuse for you not to come to Rwanda. Uh, if you want to you know, get to the country, it's easy for you to buy a ticket. And even tomorrow, get on the flight to come to Kigali for you know, to do business, but also for tourism purposes. Um, then we also have hubs in different locations uh, that serve different um, you know, geographical locations. In West Africa, we have a hub in you know, Kotunu, uh, Benin, but also we fly to uh, the Middle East, uh, to Dubai, as, and, and even as far as Asia to India, and then South Africa. This is to give you at least a summary on some of the international companies that have set up in Rwanda. And as RDB being a one-stop center for doing business, our role is really to make your life so easy, you know, from setting up your company, uh, you know, to setting up your investment. We run a one-stop shop that provides seamless services from company registration to investment registration. If you're a foreign national that is coming to live and work in Rwanda, there's certain services that you'd need for you to, you know, operate your business more efficiently. Uh, we have, um, you know, migration services uh, within our one-stop center, environmental impact assessment, you know, and these are services that you'd literally, uh, you know, secure from other institutions. But as a country, as a government, we understand that time is very important, but at the same time, working with you to make sure that your project is implemented in the shortest time uh, as possible. So EIA services, uh, is one of the uh, key services that we do provide within RDB. We also do have, uh, you know, incentive management. Uh, we have representatives from the, uh, uh, the tax administration that literally are within uh, office to be able to facilitate and fast track any applications for tax exemptions without you going to these institutions and, and making your life so difficult. So literally every service that you need that is business related can be secured uh, through the Rwanda Development Board. Now, in terms of opportunities, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, um, quite broad, but I would really want to speak to some of the areas of priorities that we are trying really to promote for us to be able to, you know, achieve high economic growth. But at the same time, we really want to create uh, an, an environment that allows people to come, test, prove, and scale their products beyond uh, the Rwandan market. Uh, one of the areas that I really want to highlight, and in today we'll be speaking more to this, is really positioning Rwanda as a financial services hub through the Kigali International Financial Center. Uh, we have the right policies that we've already put in place for you to bring your financial products uh, on the market. And the idea here is, you know, to address some of the challenges that our country has gone through, but also to be able to attract a pool of new capital uh, into our economy. The other third element is how do you scale your products and services uh, beyond Rwanda? And this is how the idea of setting up the Kigali International Financial Services Center uh, came up. So 
Again, as I mentioned, I don't need to repeat this. If you want to set up your uh, company or securing a business license, there's no other place that you need to go to. You know, it's RDB. We have the Rwanda Finance Limited that does facilitate uh, investors that are looking to domicile the Pan-African entities uh, into Rwanda. But the other thing is also to be able to give you, um, you know, advice on how to start, how can you connect with some of the companies that are in Rwanda that can work with you for you to be able to uh, make your life so easy to set up uh, your business. And then lastly is also how do we make sure that the incentives that we have in our investment code facilitate your business for you to be able to uh, start, you know, to, to offset some of the costs that you'd be incurring in terms of paying taxes uh, for your business. Then other very important sectors or areas, um, I know that we may probably have, um, you know, different investors in this room. It's also very important to highlight some of the other sectors that we're currently promoting in our pursuit to attract more foreign direct investment. Um, so we have agriculture and agro-processing. Uh, Rwanda's predominantly is economy is dependent on agriculture. Our goal is really to be able to transition our agriculture to, you know, from subsistence to commercial agriculture. And with that, government has made huge investments, when, whether in terms of you know, uh, putting up projects in irrigation, um, but also um, in, in the interest of ensuring food security, we've made sure that uh, you know, we specialize in spe specific crops that we believe will help us really to uh, you know, address the issue of food security, not just in Rwanda, but even across the region. So we have greenfield investments, brownfield investments, that we'll be able to share with you and, and see uh, if you're in, probably interested in investing in those. We have Gabiro Agribusiness Hub, which is a state-of-the-art um, you know, you know, irrigation uh, project that you're currently undertaking and seeking for you know, uh, private investors. Uh, and then we also have BPO, uh, Business Process Outsourcing. So if you're into the space of BPO, we believe this could also be uh, a good area for you to invest. Manufacturing. Our goal is really to attract more value-added manufacturing, in light manufacturing. So if you're someone who's into construction materials, textile and garments, food processing, um, you know, pharmaceuticals, packaging, these are some of the areas that we believe will really help us really to, you know, address the, the domestic demand, but also at the same time be able to export uh, these products and services uh, to the rest of the region. Uh, housing and real estate, infrastructure, energy, uh, mining and quarrying are all the other sectors that we're really putting much emphasis on in our bid to attract more foreign direct uh, investment in Rwanda. So ladies and gentlemen, with that, uh, I come to the end of the presentation. We'll be very happy to you know, have a uh, you know, uh, deeper conversation with you. We have a stand uh, up, so we'll be able to really take you through some of the opportunities uh, in detail uh, and then be able to see how we can create a very strategic partnership with you. So thank you very much for your kind attention.